What's up guys, Mark here. In today's video, I'm gonna go over four features that the Sony FX3 has that makes creating content e easier, easy, easy. <sighs> Let's get right into it. Number one, the camera has dedicated buttons mapped to the most frequently used settings for recording movies. This may seem silly at first, but this is one less step that you have to monkey around with. And the default layout is extremely logical and works for me. On my a7 IV, which is sitting right back there, I had to customize the C1, C2, and C3 for settings dedicated to recording movies. This wasn't overly difficult to do, but I did have to remember what functions or feature that I mapped to each specific button. Sony did this for us on FX3 by default. All of the most used settings that I use are already mapped to a button. This may sound trivial, but since Sony did this for a camera of this small size, it really does help content creators like myself remember where all of this stuff is. So let's quickly go over the button layout and then the one that I changed. Button number one is iris. I changed the iris on the FX3 to turn off the autofocus and I control the iris now with the scroll wheel. This is the only one I felt the need to change. Button number two is white balance. The one button access to white balance up top is the bee's knees. Button number three is mapped to ISO. This toggles between 800 and 12,800 on the FX3, which is the dual native ISOs. Button number four actually turns the LUT on and off when you're actually using the camera, but it also doubles as quick access to the camera's guide when you're in the main menu. Button number five right on the back, that's for focus magnifier, and we're gonna touch on that here in a minute. Button number six is the record button, which is on the front of the camera, which is great when you are filming yourself. So if you're a solo creator, having that record button in the front is clutch. Okay, moving on. Feature number two, quarter 20 mounts mounted into the body. So why are the quarter 20 mounts useful and how do they make creating content easier? The two on the top make it super easy for me to add a top handle. I have a small rig NATO rail bracket that allows me to mount my Condor Blue top handle. This keeps my rig small and minimalistic. Without the quarter 20 mounts, I would have to mount the top handle in the hot shoe, which is a no bueno. We're almost done. Number three, the third feature the Sony FX3 has that makes creating content easier is clear image zoom. My main use case for using clear image zoom is when I have the camera mounted on a tripod. And once everything is set up, I find that sometimes I need a little bit of extra reach. Sony's documentation states you can zoom into images using an image process with less deterioration. What this technically means, when you're using clear image zoom, you can zoom in without any degradation of the image. I do want to call this out. Sony does not make this statement about the other two choices, which are optical zoom and digital zoom. So I avoid using them. Clear image zoom is actually controlled by the zoom rocker right here by the shutter button. When using the zoom rocker, you get a 1.5 times max zoom reach. I have a 24 millimeter prime mounted on the camera now. This technically turns my 24 millimeter into a progressive 26.4, 28.8, 31.2, and 36 millimeter prime. The clear image zoom feature is toggled from 1.1 to 1.5 using the rocker on the focus button. To enable it, you have to get in the menu. Go to menu, shooting, zoom, zoom range, select clear image zoom. I did want to mention, whenever you enable clear image zoom and zoom in, the autofocus gets about as dumb as a box of rocks. The autofocus is running in a restricted state and the touch to focus features literally vaporize and disappear. It does offer a dotted box and the autofocus will work with center priority inside the box. With that being said, this is how I use it. I pre-focus on the subject first, and then I use the zoom rocker to punch in 1.1 to 1.5 times. Okay, number four, the last one, which is focus magnifier. Focus magnifier helps you to confirm focus, whether you're in autofocus or manual focus. As intelligent as Sony's autofocus is, sometimes it needs a little bit of help. This tiny display can make it very difficult to check focus. And this is where Focus Magnifier comes in to help save the day. Here I come to save the focus day. Magnifier allows you to punch in by four times to check focus on your image. So here's how you get in there and set it up. Press button number five to activate Focus Magnifier. An orange rectangle should appear on the screen. You can use the jog wheel, joystick, or touchscreen to move the orange rectangle around. Pressing enter on the jog wheel or the joystick will magnify the image. Okay guys, that's it for today. So in summary, so number one, dedicated buttons mapped to the most commonly used movie settings are already done for you. Number two, quarter 20 mounts, 
all around the body. This makes it really easy to add accessories to the camera body, whether you use a cage or not. And number three, clear image zoom allows you to punch in by 1.5 times to get some additional reach out of that full frame sensor. And number four, last but not least, is focus magnifier. Focus magnifier comes in clutch when you really need to confirm focus when you're out there running and gunning and filming stuff. And with that being said, I appreciate every last one of you peeps for hanging with me for a few minutes. And I really hope this video provided value. And with that, I need to bust out of here. And guess what? It's okay to eat fish because they don't have feelings. Yeah.